first saw you, you were smiling And I was too, you look beautiful Just like you always do and I was thinking that we could be best friends I was hoping that this would never end You were skeptical, but I was confident
afternoon to everyone. I welcome all of you here at the spectacular courtyard of the Courtyard Marriott for a celebration about love. Amy and Kim, this is your day. This is your celebration and the beginning of a new chapter in your love story, a start of something absolutely beautiful. Today is a day of celebrating life, family, friends, but most importantly, love. Wherever, whenever we attend a wedding, we are given the opportunity to reflect on our own relationships. We might look at the couple before us and be tempted to compare their love to the quality of our own relationships. The truth is that every relationship is unique as the individuals in it. But one thing holds true. For love to exist between two people, each person must allow the vulnerability of giving his or her love to the other. And each must be open to receiving the other's love in return. Most people get married believing that marriage is a beautiful box full of things that they've longed for. Companionship, intimacy, friendship. The truth is, marriage at the start is an empty box. You must put something into it before you can take anything out. There is no love in marriage. Love is in people. And people put love in marriage. There is no romance in marriage. You need to infuse it into your marriage, just like laughter, understanding, compassion, and respect. A couple must learn the art of giving, loving, praising, of keeping that box full and overflowing. Because if you take more than you put in, the box will be empty. So if you love someone, love them completely, without expectation. Cherish them. Say you love them. Show you love them over and over again. Let us celebrate. We begin the ceremony with a lovely reading entitled Why Marriage by Dina Akolasti. Why marriage? Because of the depths of me, I long to love one person. With all of my heart, my soul, my mind, my body. Because I need a forever friend to trust with the intimacies of me. Who won't hold them against me. Who loves me when I'm unlikable. Who sees the small child in me and who looks for the divine potential of me. Because I need to cuddle in the warmth of the night with someone who is thankful for me but someone I feel blessed to hold because marriage means the opportunity to grow in love, in friendship. Because knowing this, I promise myself to take full responsibility for my spiritual, mental, and physical wholeness. I create me. Because with this understanding, the possibilities are limitless and our love will last forever. Amy and Kim, momentarily you will exchange your vows. Amy, I feel overwhelmingly lucky and proud to be standing beside you today. You have filled my life with joy and have given me a sense of peace that I have never known. You are my best friend, my biggest supporter. I will not take our time together for granted. And because words cannot do it, I promise to show you for the rest of my life how much I love you. I promise to encourage you. I promise to be compassionate. I promise to hold your hands through the good times and through the bad times. I promise to help shoulder our challenges. I promise to be loyal and faithful. Lastly, I promise to you perfect love and perfect trust. For one lifetime with you could never be enough. This is my sacred vow to you, my eco in all things. Kim, from the moment we first met, I knew you were someone special. Your kindness, genuine. Your support, invaluable. Your love, pure. You have the most beautiful heart and patient that could stand the test of time. Thank you for being my strength and helping me through the most difficult time in my life. 
Thank you for challenging me to be my best self and encouraging me when I doubt myself. Most of all, thank you for your undeniable love and placing your heart next to mine. You are my lover, my best friend, my partner in crime. I promise to love and support you, to protect you from all your fears, no matter how tiny they are. <laughs> I promise to be your partner through whatever life brings and encourage you to follow your dreams. Today, I am truly blessed that in few moments, I will have the honor to not only be your wife, but to call you my husband. I love you. We are honored today to have the mother of the bride and the mother of the groom present the gifts of the rings. As each of you hold these rings in your hands, pause for a moment and make your wishes for the couple and their future together. These rings will not only be a gift from you, to one from the other, but will, given, will be given with your unconditional love and support and wisdom. Amy? I give this ring as my gift to you. Wear it and think of me and know that I love you. Kim, I give this ring as my gift to you. Wear it and think of me and know that I love you. Amy and Kim, although each of you wear only one of them, these rings essentially belong to you both, for they are a symbol of the love you share and the promise that it will be a strong and lasting love. They are also an extension of your vows and commitment to one another and have been handed to each of you for the other with the love of your mothers. May they be a constant reminder of this moment, of your strength together, and of your love for, the, for one another as you continue on this most beautiful journey together. Before this moment, you have been many things to one another. Momentarily, you shall say a few words that will take you across a threshold. For after that, you shall, you shall say to the world, this is my handsome husband, Kim, and this is my beautiful wife, Amy. In so much as the two of you have promised your love by the vows you have made to each other and the exchanging of rings, I now ask you to acknowledge the declaration of marriage. Kim, do you solemnly declare that you do not know of any lawful impediment why you may not be joined in matrimony to Amy? I do. And do you, Kim, call upon these persons here present to witness that you, Kim, do you take Amy to be your lawful wedded spouse? I do. Very good. Amy, do you solemnly declare that you do not know of any lawful impediment why you may not be joined in matrimony to Kim? I do. And do you, Amy, call upon these persons present to witness that you, Amy, do you take Kim to be your lawful wedded spouse? I do. Let us now move to the signing of the marriage register, and I warmly welcome the bride and groom's beautiful daughter, Samantha, and Kim's sister, Carolyn. Amy and Kim and Samantha have chosen to perform a unity sand ceremony, which is a beautifully simple idea that provides an incredible, powerful message. It is simply an affirmation of family. Amy and Kim, 
Today you have promised your love to one another, but you are also pledging your love to Samantha by reassuring her that together you are a family. Samantha, I hope you know that you are an integral part of this circle of love and of this marriage. Each of you holds your own vessel of sand. Each vessel holds its, holds its own unique beauty, strength, and character. When the three are blended together, they represent an extraordinary relationship, a family. Amy and Kim, I now invite you to pour some of your sand into the center vase, showing that your marriage is the foundation of this family. Now invite Samantha to pour some of her sand into the center. These swirling colors remind us that we are all different people and it is our different personalities that add the beautiful color to the tapestry of family. The colors of the sand were each chosen by Amy, Kim, and Samantha, and each color is representative of each individual. Kim's sand is green, meaning health, luck, renewal, and youth. Amy chose lavender, purple, representing wisdom and enlightenment. And Samantha chose pink, which represents caring, compassion, and love. I see love and hope and togetherness in your eyes when you look at each other. I felt it the first time I met you both, and the second time. <laughs> May the pages of the story always be filled with laughter, romance, togetherness, and passion. And may you have the opportunity to experience life together in the most surreal way possible and experience the most beautiful and magical moments together. Be the best you can be with each other. To family and friends, on behalf of Amy and Kim, we thank each and every one of you for your love and support and for celebrating with us. A special thank you to those who have traveled a distance to be here. We have family and friends from Ottawa, uh, Montreal, Belgium, France, Seattle, Washington, and Charlotte, North Carolina. So welcome. Let's hear it for them. And now it's time for me to declare you married. From today, your family, your friends, your community, and indeed the whole world will know you as co-travelers through life and adventurers and life partners, husband and wife. Amy and Kim, in the presence of your family and friends, <laughs> and by virtues of the power vested in me by the province of Ontario, I hereby pronounce you husband and wife. Congratulations, you may kiss your bride. It is now my privilege to present to you for the very, very first time, the fabulous and spectacular Mr. and Mrs. Nat Kim and Amy Lam Lee. Let's hear it for them.
Absolutely stunning tonight. 
And the Bridal Party. Bridal Party's doing their game as well tonight. They're, they're on top of it right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start off tonight by welcoming uh, Jeff to give a toast. So, Jeff, where are you? But Oh, you're right beside me. Here we go. It's like we had a clan. Belgium, France, Seattle, Washington, Carolinas, Montreal, Toronto, Ontario, GTA, Pickering, Pickering. We're all here, every one of us, we're all here for one reason. There's only one reason. It's those two. It's Amy and Kim. Because we love you, because we admire you, and there's no other place that any one of us would rather be right now than right here with you two. We've got Kim's, of course, family, the Lee family, and of course the extended clan that's here. We've got Amy's father, the Howes family, and of course, you know, your extended family's here. We've got the Lum family, which is, of course, Lynn's mother and my wife and their clan. And we've got my family, which is the Bowers family and my extended kind of clan. Four big clan families all brought together. And of course, we have, we have friends, childhood friends, high school friends, university friends. We have coworkers, Dell, Microsoft, Microsoft, how about Microsoft? Cheer for Microsoft? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cheer for head office, Seattle. Yay, Bill Gates. I know he's kind of just doing the Palantir thing now, but you know. So we're all, we're all here. And for, for the reason I'm up here is I just want to say, on behalf of Amy and Kim, just to you know welcome and thank everybody. And I'm going to tell you a quick story. This is like the longest toast in the history of a wedding. I'm going to tell you a quick story. And they kind of shared it with me ahead of time. Some of you might know the story. It's about how they met. So they met through work. My, you know, of course, Kim was Microsoft. And um, you know, Kim was, or sorry, uh, Amy was kind of working at Microsoft at the time. They met through work. Of course, we can kind of figure out what happened, right? They became friends. And then, of course, eventually went on on their first date. If you don't know this, their first date. Sushi-ya Japan. That's the name of the place. I understand it's not very far from here. And take a wild guess. It's a Japanese place. Shrimp, tempura, you know, that kind of stuff. And it was February 12th, 2007. So you can do the math about 12 and a half years ago. Anyway, the story goes, you know, typical first date, you know, awkward, you know, all the usual stuff. But they ordered a bunch of food. Anyway, the story goes that, you know, the shrimp, you know, the, you know, the, the tail, the part that 99% of people throw away, Kim ate them. And I guess Amy was like, okay, this is kind of like whatever, right? And I guess that was, you know, she kind of realized this sort of difference, you know? But the point of this story isn't really about shrimp tails. Or even really about the date. It's about the, the fact that, that that night, that date, if you will, you know, they discovered they had differences. But more importantly, what they discovered, as we all now know, in the days and weeks and months that would follow, is that they had more in common than they had apart. They had friendship. They had respect for each other. They had compassion. They had patience. We heard about Kim's patience. So they had all those things. And really, when you look at today, this moment, this is the incubation of that 12 and a half years, this ultimate moment of love that we're all witnessing from that simple date at some Japanese place. So if you are able to stand, I would like you to grab a drink. I'm going to do the same. Don't worry. <laughs> no, I'm going to get the one with booze in it. <laughs> if you're able to stand... Please stand with me because we're going to do a, we're going to give a toast to Amy and Kim. Nice, nice and simple. So Amy and Kim, there isn't a soul in this room that isn't happy to be here. And I can tell you, I just say it on behalf of everybody, that we all wish you a wonderful life together. We know you've already had a wonderful life, but you're going to continue to have a wonderful life. So I think on behalf of everyone here, we salute you and we say cheers and Salute.
Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so one of the questions was actually kind of already answered uh, if you were listening to Jeff's speech. So I'm not going to ask that uh, just yet, but, you know, it is a style of question. So just so everybody knows, where was their first date? You got to give me the name of the restaurant. I See, Sushi, yeah, we got some people listening. You guys haven't been to the bar enough. Okay, listen. What's your name, sir? I am uh, Amy's uncle. My name is Glenn. Glenn. Nice to meet you, Glenn. Glenn, here we go. How many pets do Kim and Amy own, and what type? You have to name the types and how many. They have two pets. One is Kiki, a dog, and they have a cat. Uh, dang, what's that cat's name? Uh, oh. Nightshade. Nightshade. Okay, well, I mean, I want to... Okay, are, what was the dog's name? Kiki? Kiki was the dog's name, and Nightshade? Are, are those accurate names, guys? They are. But... But did he get the answer right? We'll give him a pass. They own one dog and three cats. You forgot Garfield and Felix. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Next up, we have our next speech for the night coming from the best man. So please give a round of applause for Viet. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's gonna be <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be tough to beat Jeff because uh, he did quite a bit of a performance there. But uh, for those who didn't pay attention to the introduction, my name is Viet, also known as Phil, um, Kim's brother. Um, so, not sure how to start all this. So let me start by with a little story on how I met Amy for the first time. So one day, I just got a phone call in the morning uh, from Kim uh, to just pop by his work for, for no reason, just come by and see me. Right? So I'm like, okay, well, why not? You know, we, we work close to each other. Um, so I came by with my car and then there I found Amy, the two <coughs> smoking together outside. Uh, so I'm like, okay, wow, well, okay, so this is Amy. No, not much, just my coworker, not much introduction, aside from the name, but I'm like, okay, I think there's something going on here. Um, so then after that day, every day coming home, roughly around 10 o'clock, my brother would hop into the shower, quickly take a shower, and then off he went, all night. Uh, and I wouldn't see him till the next day because I would wake up early to go to work and then see him, you know, by the time I come home from work. And this just kept on going on every day, every single day, all the way to the day he went and bought his house. And then again, you know, after he bought his house, that's when I actually got a chance to meet Amy again. Right? And then that's when we started getting to know each other. And one thing I got to say is, Amy always treated me as almost, almost like a little brother. Uh, she never got mad at me for anything I did. She always gave me advices whenever she felt like she, every event of my life, she always tried to get involved as much as she can. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I really appreciate that. And I, I do recognize that. Thank you, Amy. Um, where am I here? <laughs> All right, the next thing is how I feel. About Amy. So, Amy, I know you could be very, very difficult, and a lot of people probably feel the same way. Right? And, you know, unfortunately, you know, some people do use the word bossy. Right? But at the end of the day, 
from personal experience, having a quite difficult wife as well. She's not even paying attention. Um, <laughs> it's actually, it's actually a benefit for us, you know, because me and my brother, from time to time, we do get a little bit lost, you know, not knowing what's going on, and that's when they do come in play and you know shine a bit of light as to what's going on for us. So it's not always a bad thing. Right? But, so, not much to my speech. I mean, that's a little story I had for, the, for everyone. But um, I just want to take a minute for everybody to maybe stand up and give it a round of applause to beautiful Amy. I never got a chance to see her as beautiful as today. But... Uh, And a quick hug. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I really appreciate everybody coming tonight. Uh, I know Amy and my brother has worked very, very hard. Um, you know, especially with baby Amy being so bossy to my brother. It was, it's been a little bit of a tough time. But hey, they've, they've got, uh, you know, they've realized a wonderful night and I look forward to, uh, to the remaining of the night. So enjoy, guys. <laughs> We're going to now, ladies and gentlemen, invite Kim to the dance floor. And I'd like to invite your mother to please join you on the dance floor for the mother and son dance. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Kim and his mom. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was beautiful. Next up, we have our next speech for the night is coming from the Maid of Honor. So please welcome Shauna to the podium. Thank you. Okay, I'm not really good at these things, and I'm doing this against my better judgment. <laughs> All for the love of Amy and Kim. So I'll just dive right in. Amy and I have been through a lot of growing up together over the last 20 plus years. We've had our kids, our first loves and losses, our small getaways, sleepovers, our late nights out, and or on the phone all night. <laughs> and we were always inseparable. 
As we continued to grow, we still had each other's hearts and backs at the best and worst of times. I can tell you I knew Kim was going to become a big deal from the beginning. I remember getting a call from Amy to meet for dinner at a nice restaurant, and I was wondering why she made this plan. It was a first of its kind. She wanted to tell me all about Kim. It was as if she knew this relationship was going to change her life. Kim, thank you for being the most consistent and constant force in Amy's life. Today is a beautiful day of unity in your relationship. We have become cemented in each other's families and permanent fixtures in each other's hearts. And we'll continue to do so. And now we are all here to share in this joyous occasion where we have furthered their commitment to each other and graciously spoiled us all with this lovely evening tonight. Please raise a glass to Amy and Kim. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Shauna. Give her a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. What's your name? Tell everyone your name. I'm Roy. All right, Roy. And, and how do you know the bride and groom? I'm uh, one of Amy's uncles. Awesome, awesome. So. Her best uncle. Her best uncle. Yeah. Her best uncle. Hey, hold on a minute. <laughs> We're gonna have to separate the tables. Okay. Oh, I can't show you this sheet. I got all the. I got the cheat sheet here, buddy. How long? How long have you known? Uh, have you known Amy for? How many years? So, uh, as many as there's been. That's probably the best answer I've gotten all night. You guys should just kiss anyways. All right, here we go. Ooh, I got, I got a couple uh, good ones here. What is, because you've known Amy all of her life, we're going to make it tough. What is the groom's favorite liquor? Beer. Liquor, liquor. I'll give you a pass on that. Liquor. I'll give you a hint. It's not vodka. Whiskey. Whiskey. It's not. It's not whiskey. It's not scotch. <laughs> and it's not sake. Ugh. I don't know how many, how many people actually prefer sake over anything. You know the answer? You know the answer. Okay, all right. Sorry, buddy. You tried. You tried. Okay. I think we got the answer over here at table seven. She's going to slide in. It's a collie friend type uh, deal here. What's your name? I'm Jan from Seattle. From Seattle. And Jan, what is the groom's favorite liquor? I'm going to go with cognac. Cognac. There we go. Very well done, Jan. That, that is pretty impressive. Jan's obviously a good friend. She pays attention. She might pick up the tab, too. Who knows? Who knows? She's looking at the receipts later. Where did all this cognac come from? All right. <laughs> Look at the two of you dancing that way Lost in the moment and each other's face So much in love, you're alone in this place Like there's nobody else in the world I was enough for her not long ago I was her number one she told me so And she still means the world to me Just so you know So be careful when you hold my girl Time changes everything Life must go on I'm not gonna stand in your way I loved her first I held her first And a place in my from the first 
first breath she breathed. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the sister of the bride, Catherine. Thanks for calling me out. <laughs> yes, please laugh at my jokes. My self-esteem can't handle it. <laughs> so about a month ago, Amy asked me, do you think Kim is a good man? I responded jokingly that Kim was part of the family a year before I was, so I couldn't really judge. But after that day, I started to think about it. The only thing I really knew about Amy and Kim when I first met them was that they had no qualms about inviting people over to their house and putting their worst nightmare in the guest room. <laughs> For those of you who don't know the story, um, essentially I had a big fear of dolls growing up, and they essentially put Chucky in the guest room waiting for me when I arrived. <laughs> I met Amy and Kim as a pair, so it's always been normal to speak of them as such. And in the last decade, I've learned that Amy and Kim are the type of people that will stay up all night to help edit your homework. <laughs> They're also the type of people to say, tell you it's complete crap and to redo it for the third time. <laughs> Amy and Kim are the type to sit in the audience and cheer for you at your best times, but they're also behind the scenes with an ear out at your worst times. Amy and Kim are the type to invite you into their family and treat you as if you belong there. They're the type of people that teach you that blood isn't the only definition of family. Please believe me when I say this. They've done this for me and more. Amy and Kim. Two people that have always and will always be together, where it doesn't even make sense to say one name without the other. But before I end, just for the sake of answering Amy's question, is Kim a good man? Eh, he's all right. <laughs> you nailed it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Amy, don't go anywhere too far. I know you're a little bit emotional <laughs> right now. It's okay. But uh, Amy has been fortunate enough in her life uh, to have two dads. And I'd like to invite Jeff to please dance with Amy. Thank you. Welcome, Ang and Mai. Ah, tôi là thân phụ của chú rể. Hôm nay tôi xin thay mặt gia đình bên nhà trai tôi xin gửi đến quý vị thân bằng quyến thuộc đã đến đây tham dự buổi tiệc mừng lễ thành hôn của con tôi và Ami. Ông 
I am the father of the groom. <laughs> and on behalf of our family, I would like to thank everyone for coming and celebrate the wedding of my son and Amy. Tôi rất mừng khi con tôi đã chính thức lập gia đình ngày hôm nay. Vì tôi xưa nay là một người cha mà khắc khổ, mà nó khắc khe với con cái lắm. Nhưng mà bây giờ tôi rất mãn nguyện và vui mừng khi con tôi đã lập gia đình với người con gái mà nó yêu. I'm going to summarize. <laughs> um, I am very pleased that um, my son has officially um, um, officially married his love today. Um, I am particularly very strict and uh, <laughs> And so it makes me very happy that he is now officializing their relationship. Tôi mong và hy vọng rằng con tôi và Amy sẽ vuông sới cây hạnh phúc càng ngày càng tươi tốt và hy vọng rằng nó sẽ có kết quả đăng nay mai. I sincerely hope that they will Come on this to me. Um they will Um, no, well, yeah, um, <laughs> they will grow the tree of love and <laughs> they will, uh, that will have, it will, some fruits of the love. <laughs> and I will be godmother once again. <laughs> I don't Bây giờ tôi xin nhường lời lại cho vợ tôi là thân mẫu của chú rể nói chuyện cùng quý vị ạ. À, kính thưa tất cả bà con thân quyến hôm nay cũng như bạn bè để tham dự chung vui ngày ngày thành hôn của hai cháu Kim Nhạc và Amy. Thay mặt gia đình chúng tôi thành thật cảm ơn tất cả những thân bằng quyến thuộc và từ xa đến để chung vui với các cháu và tất cả những bạn bè của bên hai họ có điều gì sơ xuất xin xin tha thứ cho chúng tôi và một vài lời nhắn nhủ với hai con cái ngày hôm nay rất là hạnh phúc cái hạnh phúc này không không có dễ để mà có được. Do đó, nó là cái nền tảng căn bản để chúng con gắn bỏ trong cái cuộc sống sắp tới giữa đôi vợ chồng để gắn bỏ nhau, để bước qua tất cả những cái hạnh phúc cũng giống như tất cả những khó khăn của cuộc đời chia sẻ nhau và gắn vác cùng nhau để bảo trầm cái niềm hạnh phúc của ngày hôm nay và cũng là cái niềm hạnh phúc forever mãi mãi về sau. Okay, no. Okay, please help me translate into the English for mom. <laughs> so the strength, the translation goes this way. Whatever my father said, She just repeated it. 
She just said it in a much nicer way, with much more eloqu <laughs> eloquent words. And she also added that if um, th this, this has been a very happy day for our family, and you know, please forgive us if, there's, if there has been any missteps in anything that happened today. Um, she went on and explained something about how love is a long journey and you know you just have to put a lot of effort into this and something about crossing the boundaries together and I kind of stopped listening. It was a lot of poetic and a lot of love and a lot of togetherness and a lot of hang in there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right, give it up one more time, ladies and gentlemen, for the groom's parents, for Kim's parents. I don't think I could have said it better myself. That being said, we're going to continue on with our next speech, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome the bride's parents. We're going to start off with dad and loan. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, please. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you all for showing up. <laughs> it's a great and wondrous evening. Um, I was going to kind of start off with how Amy affected my life and how Kim got introduced into it. <laughs> uh, basically, um, one afternoon at my parents' farm, uh, Lynn came down and me and my dad were working on my car at the time. And she asked me how long we were going to be before the car was fixed. And I said, be lucky if we're done by the weekend. And just happened to notice that she kind of made a little bit of a... Uh, I don't know, quince, I guess. And it's just like, is everything okay? Mm, no. And so basically we packed into my dad's old Fargo pickup truck and raced off to Newmarket to uh, deliver this little bundle of joy. <laughs> and... Uh, Basically, um, years later, uh, it was one night at her place, and this gentleman was uh, sitting out in the car, <laughs> didn't want to come in. <laughs> we comically referred to him as her stalker. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and several years later, actually, I finally met this gentleman. <laughs> And we hit it off really well. He's been a great influence on her life and a great joy in her life. And, you know, I'm very glad that she actually met somebody as wonderful as him. Um, then about two years ago, on his <laughs> birthday, he showed up, well, we were all at his place, and he came by and he says, I'd like to ask for Amy's hand in marriage. And it's just like, yeah, okay, this is great. She's been talking about it for years. He's finally going to do it. <laughs> well, we waited through Christmas, her birthday, Valentine's. <laughs> and it just continued on. <laughs> Eventually, we finally got the news that yes, he finally asked her. <laughs> and that's basically it. From that point on, things just kind of snowballed. So uh, with that said, I'd like to 
welcome Kim to our family. And that I know he'll be a great addition. It's, as the old cliche goes, I'm not losing a dollar, I'm gaining a son. Thank you, guys. And our next speech, before we take a quick pause, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome Mom and Jeff. Please. So, Jim, that was well said, really well said. And I remember that night, too, because uh, I think Kim had a few, actually. But yeah, he asked all of us that night. <laughs> and then we waited and waited. Anyway, I'm going to be brief and I'm going to turn it over to, um, you know, Amy's mom. But I'm going to just tell you about the time I met Amy because I remember it perfectly. <clears throat> perfectly. It was the, actually the first date that I ever had with Lynn. And this is in 1998. So I, you know, came to pick her up, you know, went up to the door. First date, ring the doorbell. And guess who comes to the door? Not my date. Amy. An 18-year-old version. You have to try to picture an 18-year-old version. A little feisty. I think that's the word that comes to mind. <clears throat> and kind of like, yeah, who's this guy? Like, going to take my mom out. But <clears throat> she left an impression on me even that night. And, uh, you know, I liked her. She had attitude, and, and she was bright, and I liked her. And obviously, we all know, you know, the woman that she's become. And of course, Kim coming into her life 12 years ago. So it's, we're all just really proud. And I'm going to turn it over to Lynn, who's going to take it away. Thank you. I've written a little thing. <laughs> Dear daughter, it's hard to believe that this beautiful bride sitting in front of me is now a married woman. It does not seem that long ago when you were born, you went to school, you became a teenager, you became a mother. You made me a proud grandmother to Sammy. You started a career and now a married woman. As your mother, and for those who do not know me, I'm not a warm and fuzzy person, but I do want you to know that I love you very much and I'm so very proud of you. It's truly a special day for me to see both you and Kim make that final commitment to one another to become one. You married your best friend, your soulmate, your partner who you shared many, many years together already. Kim, you were already a part of our family even before you got married. And I wanna thank you for the happiness and patience, and I say patience, <laughs> that you've given to Amy. You can truly see the love that they have for one another as well as Kiki, their dog. Amy and Lynn, um, Kim, share a love of cooking. And they are just about what I would call, or we would call foodie people, foodie persons. They've posted many of their succulent dishes and desserts that they have made on social media. So those that are on Facebooks and whatnot, you see all these wonderful photos. They have made cooking an art, and we are truly blessed and enjoy being their guinea pigs. The women in our family are a pretty independent bunch with a strong will and determination. Amy is no different. When she was younger, in her 20s, she would call me and tell me what was happening with her life. And when I gave her advice, she would say, I'm not asking you for advice. I'm just telling you what's going on. 
When she decides to do something, she puts 110% behind it. She's very detailed in every aspect. And you can tell she's made the, the centerpieces and the decorations and everything else really, really detailed in every, everything that she does. I know, she even picked out my dress and things like that and told me what to wear. The only thing I haven't figured out was when she was small, she would always hide her junks in nooks and crannies all over her room. You could not get into her room because it was full of stuff. Over the years, Amy and I have become closer as mother and daughter, and I'm glad to have her also as my friend. Amy, you have given us the joy of the most beautiful and wonderful granddaughter, Sammy, who we love spending time, and we want to thank you. I would like to share some wisdom, and that is for the both of you to share your feelings to each other, whether they be happy or sad, and to hold each other close in good times and in bad. So for everyone, I would like you to raise a toast to Amy and Kim. The sweetest of love come from the commitment of love that you have for one another. May the two of you have a long, happy, and healthy life together. Cheers. And I don't have a glass. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Jeff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our last speech of the night comes from no other than your newlywed. So please give a warm round of applause for Kim and Amy. Okay. We should have gotten the was a teleprompter now. Okay. Uh, my wife and I are humbled to see so many of our family and friends together here to celebrate our marriage. Thank you so much for those that have traveled near and far from all over Canada and as far as Belgium and the United States. At the same time, we have in our hearts and minds those that couldn't be here with us today. If I could be upstanding, please join us in raising a toast to family and friends present and, and absent. There are a few people we feel deserve uh, special thanks to all their help and support in making this day a success. To our parents, everything that we are today and everything that we may become tomorrow is all for the sacrifices that you have made. From the bottom of our hearts, we thank you. We are forever grateful for you opening up your homes and for the many days and nights to help make our wedding be filled with wonderful and loving memories. Ba mẹ, con người con đã trưởng thành đến ngày hôm nay và mọi mọi điều con có thể đạt được ngày mai tất cả là vì hy sinh của ba mẹ con luôn luôn nhớ công cha nghĩa mẹ con cảm ơn ba mẹ từ tầng đại ngọn ba mẹ Thank you for welcoming me into your family with open arms. I am honored to call you Ba Mẹ. Nana, hope you're here. We owe much thanks to your help, advice, and for being so assertive to make sure our wedding is perfect. I know it's not easy 
to juggle between our busy schedule. Your dedication is much appreciated. You're the best sister. To our bridal party. <laughs> Thank you for all your help. You've helped us make decisions when we've struggled, and you were there for us when we needed to vent. Okay, where are we? Okay, Mike. Okay, um, our friendship started when we were in grade five, and it will last for a lifetime. I'm humbled to be your friend, Juan. You are like a big brother to me. I love growing up with you, um, and you have always been there for me. Vic, I was your best man last year, and now I'm finally going to be an uncle because of you. I'm so lucky to have you as my brother. Kitty cat. I have always wanted a little sister, and I'm happy that it's you. No pun intended, Mom. A little bird. We are so proud of you. I know that you were a little lazy at times in helping us, but you made it up with an awesome Jack and Jill. Shauna. We are like two peas in a pod. I know that things can be chaotic with kids, yet you have always found a way to be there for me when I needed you. Thank you. Pour ma nouvelle famille belge, je suis honorée que vous avez, euh, avez voyagé une telle distance pour célébrer avec nous. That was good. <laughs> I don't speak French. Yeah. Okay. You missed it. I spoke French. Ah. Les cousins belges, hein? okay. <laughs> Amy, I love you in so many ways and for so many reasons, but, but mostly because you're my best friend, my soulmate. I know this is the start of many happy years together. My dear husband, I look forward to what the future brings as we start a new chapter in our story. As husband and wife, I love you. We again want to offer our most sincere thanks to all of you for helping us celebrate this special day. The night is still young. So let's get this party started! Do you want to dance? dance.